Hello and welcome to a look at a soccer kit for the Amiga. A game that was made by Chrysalis. And as you can see, both OCS, ECS and AGA versions were made and I have showcased both just for comparison's sake. The plot of a soccer kid is that you have this space pirate dragon who likes to make the trophies from different worlds and locates the World Cup trophy on Earth and decides that that will make a nice little mantle piece. So, in the process of him trying to beam it up to his ship, the World Cup gets hit, hit by an asteroid and breaks into five pieces, which falls back down to Earth into uh, five different locations. Soccer Kid sees this on the news and immediately dons his uh, soccer football equipment thing and vows to bring back the pieces of the trophy and get the trophy gathered before the World Cup Final. That was the World Cup Final of 1994, by the way, which will likely by certain people be just as epically remembered for the absolutely amazing three tennis concert that took place around the same time. But of course, that is not relevant for the game. A soccer kid is quite a soccer player or a football player as I prefer to call it and will henceforth call it. And as such, he is quite skilled with the football. He can take it in various different uh, uh, lengths and strengths. He can bounce it on his head, he can do scissor kicks or whatever it is that you call them. And he can use the uh, football as a pseudo trampoline, which is possibly one of the more useful components of the football interaction. Except for the fact, of course, that uh, you use the football to knock out enemies, which is probably the main use of the football. In order to uh, locate, or I should say, obtain the five pieces of the World Cup trophy, a soccer kid will have to unlock a bonus stage and in order to do so he will have to find various player cards. If you look at the bottom middle of the screen you will see that there are some player cards already unlocked and then there are some slots for the ones we haven't found yet. Only by finding all 11 player cards in a given city will you unlock the bonus game and only by completing the bonus game which um, means that you have to gather a certain amount of objects within a set time frame will you get a shot at getting a piece of the World Cup trophy. So at one point or another in each city you will need to gather 11 player cards if you intend to complete this game because of course otherwise you won't get a piece of the World Cup trophy. And the bonus game is not necessarily being uh, easy to complete within the time frame because they have various different paths and uh, obstacles in the way meaning that you only like to need to play them a handful of times in order to be able to beat the bonus games in the first place and get whatever piece of the trophy you are trying to get. That means that this game becomes a uh, uh, run and jump platformer with uh, quite a bit of exploration because you need to locate the cards in order to get the trophy piece. It's I've said about 11 times now, but whatever, I just want to make sure I emphasize on that aspect of it. So looking at the graphics, the style is definitely very cartoonish, cutesy and it works very very well. It has uh, definitely been drawn with a certain amount of care and is very very pleasing, pleasing even to look at. The AGA version is significantly more lively to look at than the OCS ECS version but uh, that should be a given but is not always a given. I have definitely seen OCS versions looking better than their equivalent AGA versions because all these colors and no blue house used them. 
That is not the case of soccer kit. The color usage is very, very good, and the overall graphical quality is really high. The sound design, the music is funky and very football esque. I don't know whether that word exists, but it does now. More importantly, it is not annoying to listen to after 30 seconds, which of course is uh, a somewhat important part for enjoying a game that you can actually stand to listen to its soundtrack, which you can disable if you should want to, but I chose not to do so. The sound effects are of a very good quality and very fitting for the game, and uh, thankfully there's no annoying sounds that will get on your nerves within 30 seconds either. Well, I was looking at you, Dennis, the most annoying jump sound in any game ever. And by and large, I am very, very happy with the soundscape. Not necessarily sound effects that stand out, but they don't negatively stand out either, and the music is very high quality, of a high quality effect scope. The controls can be a bit funky until you get used to them, but once you get used to them, you can uh, do some epic looking gameplay, which of course I will refrain from because I have an image to live up to. But uh, once mastered, it becomes second nature, and that's where you really start enjoying the game to its full, fullest words, yeah. The gameplay is a run and jump platformer at a foundation level, but because of the player cards you need to locate, it also becomes a bit of an exploration game, which may or may not be something for people's enjoyment. I can take it or leave it, I have to be in a certain mood to fully enjoy it, but uh, it doesn't necessarily bother me as, as such. What does bother me, and there is one thing, one thing specifically that does bother me, and it bothers me an awful lot. If you look at the screen, you will see that a soccer kid, depending on what dire which direction he is facing, he will occupy a slot in the first one third of the screen, facing the opposite direction. Which of course means that if he turns around, he will have to occupy a slot in the first third of the opposite side of the screen. Meaning that any quick turns you do from side to side means that you have a massive screen shift. Which for me personally is extremely aggravating. I really hate when games do that. It can utterly ruin a gameplay experience for me because I do play very flicky, so to speak, and uh, having the screen jump from side to side lined up can be extremely jarring for me. It's possibly just me uh, having that issue, but for me it is an issue and it is something that affects my enjoyment of the game. And uh, while I will not deny that the overall Gameplay enjoyment of such kit is definitely very, very high. That screen jumping really gets on my nerves, and I found it impossible to get the desire to keep playing the game after making the footage for this video. I should probably mention that the implementation of the football is very well done. Some people have considered it to be a unique mechanic, but I do get a bit of bubble and sticks vibe from it. Two different games, two different implementations, but Foundation having a main character relying on a tool of some description in order to progress is very, very similar. Soccer Kid is a great game, no denying that, but for me, jumpy screen transitions ruins it. On that note, Thanks for watching, take care, see you next time, bye bye for now.